Well, great afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing well? Well, let's first start off with what have you done that we can celebrate? What have you done that we can celebrate to help move your business forward? Anybody wanna share? Well, I'll share. Um, I called over from Friday to Sunday, I made 110 calls. That is fantastic. Now that man, you was working that business. Where you were look, let me list. let me tell you, Tanisha. I called I called Tasha, one of my uh one of our business partners, and tried to repeat cup. <laughs> we was just cracking up. Oh, that is funny. That is funny. Now, what what did that look like as far as effort for you? So um I did my ratio. So I did 109 people. I say Friday I called. 58 people um and then I also had some callbacks as well then the next day I made 26 calls and then the next day I did 26 more calls I think something like that um but I did my ratio so out of those 110 calls that I made 20 people answered their phone 10 people said yes five said no I had three people that hung up on me and then two people that just kind of just turned into me just uh doing a wellness check okay. um so that's what my numbers and my ratio look like excellent. excellent good job good job i love that i love that um if you have not messaged me to tell me why you can't be on camera i expect you to be on camera this is a zoom uh rochelle i saw your hand up You still there, Rochelle? Where are well, I'm still oh, there. You go. Um, yes, let's try to see if I'm <laughs> But anyway, I um prospect actually three gave out three business cards. So my That's my goal is every time I'm out to give out business cards. And what I've been doing, if I'm grocery shopping and I don't come across nobody, you know, those um those self, those self places where you uh, put your grocery away yourself. Mm -hmm. I put business cards on there. Oh, okay. at the checkout. Yeah. So think, check out. yeah. okay. That's what I've been doing so far. So I've been, been doing my best to at least peak five or 10 each day online. Got that it. is my Okay. All right. Good job. Good job. Karen? Okay. Yes, I had a very productive weekend as far as uh, peaking interest and, and exchange, getting numbers and getting exchanging numbers. And um, uh, I started Friday, you know, I had an event every day of the weekend. And I just remembered you in my ear, we don't go out to prospect, we prospect while we're out. Right. So I was out all the time and I added it up yesterday because I was like, I got to put these people in the funnel. I got to put that. I got to start doing what I'm supposed to do. I guess the names and numbers. So I have a total of 11 people that I actually met, got numbers or reacquainted with and got numbers and they and they and piqued their interest and they are interested. I wasn't just getting numbers. We started the rapport and everything and they know what's what. So they're going to be expecting a call and that's what I'm going to be doing today and tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. So Karen, let me ask you this. How, how long did it take you to prospect 11 people? Well, that was over the course of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And okay. let me ask you this. What is your, is, is your goal to become a director? It is. You're going to have to increase those numbers. I know lot. that. I know that was, you could have did 11 at first I was like, hour. that's not even worth mentioning, but <laughs> you're right. Well, I'm happy that you, you know, I'm happy that you put the effort, but we're it's in 40 days, 40 nights. And I just want to, I want to push you and mm -hmm. 11 people, you, you can prospect 11 people in an hour. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So to, you know what I mean? So to yeah. prospect 11 people over three, four days, it's like, you're not even scratching the surface when, when we're talking about 40 days, 40 nights, all out massive action. You mm -hmm. got to increase those numbers. 
So I want you to work more. on that. I want you to work on that and focus on Definitely. expecting 11 people an hour. 11 people an hour. Okay. That's a challenge, but okay. I'm it's up supposed to, it. to be, right? I'm up to it. Right. Because if it was easy, we all would be doing it, right? We all be directors, right? I get it. Exactly. Exactly. Because here's the thing. If you don't, if you don't prospect these people, one of the other 96,000 planet marketing reps will. You're right. Absolutely. So you could you could take the slow road, but then you're gonna be late at the party. Right? Right. I'm already late. I need to play catch up. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You got to increase your daily numbers. Okay. But that's good. I, I love that. You know, you're doing the work. You just got to do more of it. You're not doing anything wrong. You just got to do more of what you're already doing so that you can hit your goals. Duly noted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else do anything that we can celebrate? What have you done to move your business forward? All right. So let's get into today. We are in week three already of the No Limit Success Academy. So have you, if you have already watched the week three training video, I want you to type completed in the chat. Let's, let's see who's keeping up. Good job, Shamika, Michelle, good, good. Karen, good. Anybody else? Ebony, good job, good job. Delta, Rochelle, good. I'm so proud of y'all. That's what's up. Luz, good job, good job. Lawanda, all right. All right, so now here's the other question. If you have not watched the week three, Martina said almost, if you have not watched the week three training video, put not yet in the chat. All right, so we got Tabitha, Amira, Mary, Leticia, Pandora, Benita, Stephanie, Angela, Latanya, okay. So let's go over to Benita. Benita, tell me why you haven't watched the week three training video yet, and it's Tuesday. Um, because of financial wise, Wi-Fi, I didn't have Wi-Fi. So I can't see really so, so much on Facebook to see what I'm supposed to be doing. So you could, you, your phone wasn't working? Yeah, but it still was so slow. I couldn't really get on it the way how it should be. It wouldn't let me pull up, like it show black on certain things. Mm. So what what could you have done? I'm I'm just I'm just pushing. What could you have done so that you could get this assignment done? I probably could have went to one of those restaurants and got all the ding, 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 ding. <laughs> just thinking about it, yes. Ding, ding, I'm, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Come on, y'all. You, you cannot make excuses and make money. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you could have gone to McDonald's. You could have gone to Starbucks. You could have gone to the library. I mean, shoot, my Publix has Wi-Fi. There's no excuse. So I'm only saying I'm not trying to pick on you, Benita, because oh, I am, no, no. I am going to grab Trust some me. other people who said not yet. I'm but, fine. Trust me. You're right. You're right. I'm. I'm just saying. It's like that. That. That's way too easy to fix. Yeah. And you got right. something so simple stop you from putting you in a position to win for your family. What? What was? What is your why for doing this business? My why is to um, increase our finance and leave a legacy for my grandkids. Why is it important to you to increase your finance? So we can get out the hole that we are in and leave, have that financial freedom to do whatever, you know, whatever we want to do. Because I'm retired. My husband's not, and he's still struggling. So to get him out, um, just to get him out so he can live comfortable health-wise. So you're going to let 
no internet allow your husband to continue to struggle? I did, but no, I'm not gonna, I will do better. And I thank you. Thank you. I truly thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Angela, why haven't you watched the video yet? Hello, how you doing? Doing great. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm I'm driving, so if you don't see my face, it's, it's not okay. because I'm not here. <laughs> Keep your um, eyes on the road, Angela. I know, right? <laughs> um, well, I'm just getting started. So, so um, Mrs. Pandora, who is helping me um, to to get started, and I got to go back and and um get all my all the other weeks that I, I missed okay I'm just just trying to come in but okay um how long have you been in Angela I'm uh I'm fresh I'm very fresh how more. fresh is fresh <laughs> and so um how and it's because um what's your start date uh actually I'm gonna start on Friday Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, you real, real new. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh. But, but okay. this is not my first rodeo, uh, with this type of business. Okay. But um, I'm a couple. Two of ice. Two cups of water. I mean, I'm sorry. Two cups of ice. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but this is not, uh, this is not my first rodeo with this. So, um, so you pressing the what restart, I want but... to do is that my husband, he's currently uh, a cancer patient, mm -hmm. heart patient. He, we've been through a lot this year. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working and had to stop in May to be with him. Okay. And um, so I want to be able to not only spend as much time as I can with my family, because we never know what a life situation may be. But if I'm going to do that, I might as well enjoy, enjoy it and get paid all at the same time. I like so, it. I like it. And, and encourage others to do the same. Excellent. That this is, even though you go through, even though you go through things, it don't necessarily mean that um, you have to stay there. And, right. and um, I just want to encourage the young lady that, that was speaking before me is that you know all of us are struggling and that's where we find our strength within our struggle and so therefore if we can lean on each other mm -hmm. and and find our strength within each other then mm -hmm. we can elevate as many people as we know more than not just for traveling but just the benefit of of having that uh, security blanket exactly of being able to enjoy your family that's the most thing important thing right now is to enjoy uh, a life of not struggling yeah with your family that's and to right. leave a legacy so that's right. that's um right. so that is that is my okay. my reason well first let me say angela that uh i am praying for godspeed full recovery for your husband um, that he beats this cancer and he lives a long, prosperous life with you. Um, and definitely, you know, make sure that you get caught up with these videos, right? So that you can, I don't want you to be behind during the whole 40 days and 40 nights, because then that's, that's just trying, trying to play catch up. So make sure you set some time aside, okay? So that you can catch up on the yes, video like this, so that you can be on the same page with us. All right, and thank you yes, for sharing. Miss Pandora, why have you not watched the week three video yet? Mm, 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 mm. She said she did in the chat. She said she spoke too fast. Either that or she didn't want me to get on her. Come off mute, Miss Pandora. <laughs> Oh, you said several times. She said she's watched it several times. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Stephanie, are you able to speak? I know you at work. 
Letitia, how come you haven't watched the video yet? Week three. Yes, ma'am. Um, hi. hi, everyone. So um, I work 10 hour shifts and I know that's not an excuse and I have nope, young kids. Not. So nope, that um, ain't one either. Mm -mm. In the evenings, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, getting my family together, cooking. So I, um, my weekends are my time to catch up. And this past weekend, I had family in from out of town that I was entertaining. Um, we had a, a wedding in our family. So um, mm -hmm. this weekend went to entertaining family. So I plan on trying to catch up this week. So let me ask you this, Letitia. Do you have a calendar? I do. A weekly plan? I have it right here. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so do you have time um, blocked on your calendar for training for your business? Yeah, well, it's not blocked. I kind of ah, do okay, it. Okay, right there. The right weekend. there. Right uh -huh. there. If you don't block time to do your business, then you're just going to work your business when it's convenient for you. Okay. You can't make no money like that. You mm -hmm. just, you gotta, you got, if you treat your business like a business, it'll pay you like a business. If mm -hmm. you treat it like a hobby, who gets paid for their hobbies? Anybody? Nope. Didn't think so. So you gotta, you gotta make, it, it was maybe, let me look at, let me look something up real quick. Cause I want to see, I don't want to speak prematurely. The week three training video was an hour and 51 minutes. So you telling me the whole weekend, you couldn't find an hour and 51 minutes to watch a training video that can help you achieve everything that you want out of this business. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Um, at the time, it didn't seem like it when I was entertaining and running around and... <laughs> Yeah. So here's here's my suggestion to you. And this is for everybody because yeah, things happen. People mm -hmm. come in from out of town, holiday, birthday parties or whatever. But what you have to do is plan for those things, right? It was not a last minute thing. Like all of a sudden, ding dong, family's at your door, right? Letitia, you knew they were coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly right? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you handle your business responsibilities before the family mm -hmm. comes, right? It could have been a matter of you, you know, getting up an hour earlier or going to bed an hour late, you know, on Friday or, or Saturday or something like that, right? This yesterday morning, right? Even if it went past the weekend, yesterday morning, you say, you know what, let me get up early. So, because I didn't do what I needed to do on Sunday, but we mm -hmm. got to keep time for the things that are important because life is going to keep lifing. And so what are you going to do? Use that as an excuse every single time to not do what you mm -hmm. need to do. This is I guess it's just balancing that time because I did put into it as far as the travel side. So I was planning travel for clients and things like that. And then trying to balance it, not take too much time from my family and just, yeah, because I spent a, a few hours bounce, doing tra the travel end of it. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah, let me ask you the same to... question, Letitia. What is yes, your why for doing the business? My family so, and my young kids. Yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. here's a good, this, this is good. <laughs> this is good. Tell, tell me why your why is your family. Go deeper with that. Yeah, so um, coming from my family um, and going to school and just, living paycheck to paycheck. I want it better for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, um, and that, thank God we're blessed right now. We can provide for them, but I want to go above and beyond that. Once okay. I came out of college, I had a lot of student loan debt mm -hmm. and I didn't want that for my kids. So mm -hmm. trying to plan ahead and get extra income to help them in the future. Right. And so how do you feel you're going to accomplish that if you can't yeah. keep letting your family be the reason for why you don't do the business? Yeah. That mm -hmm. is the definition of don't let your why become your why not. You can't say you're doing this business to put your family in a better financial situation. And then you use your family as the excuse for why you don't do what you need to do to win. Mm -hmm. 
You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep stressing that every time we get together because you guys keep making this same mistake week after week after week. And before you know it, we're going to be at 100,000. And you're going to miss this wave because you keep making excuses. Mm -hmm. And the challenge with entrepreneurship is being able to switch from that employee mindset to that CEO mindset where you are leading the charge for your business. There's no supervisor, right? I'm not your boss, right, Letitia? Yeah. I'm not your boss. Uh -huh. I can't say, you gotta do, you know, I, I, I don't have a hell or a heaven to put you in. You mm -hmm. are the CEO of your business and you have to start running your business like a business or else you're not gonna make the money for your family that you're mm -hmm. telling me that you wanna make. And we had the same conversation last week. Didn't I get on y'all last week for not having watched the week two videos? And some of y'all still didn't learn the lesson. So what's it gonna take? Is it gonna take, here's what I don't want to happen. And, and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. Here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want your family to be hit with a devastating blow and you not be prepared for it. That's what y'all playing with right now. You're taking this business for granted and in the end, you're gonna lose big time. Not just you, your family. They're gonna be the ones to lose because you didn't do what needed to be done when it needed to be done. You can't make an excuses for it. I don't want that to happen to y'all, but that's that's the road you're going down. And when that blow happens, it's going to bring you to your knees. And you will have wished you could have, you could turn back time and do what you needed to be done. And that's why Mr. Bradley has said, everybody's gonna wish they had done more. When we hit momentum, everybody's gonna wish they had done more. And y'all making it, y'all letting it, the little things stop you. These ain't even big things. You ain't even saying like, oh, I've been in a coma since Friday. That's why I couldn't watch it. Like y'all letting, oh, I have family over. Oh, I just, y'all letting a leaf, a feather, stop you from doing what you need to do to win. This is 40 days, 40 nights. Nothing should stop you, nothing. Outside of a coma or you being six feet under, nothing should stop you from doing what you need to do. And it's like, if y'all can't stay focused for 40 days, 40 days, six weeks, to, to put your family in a, in a better situation, so that when a storm comes, you're prepared. How do you expect to be, how do you expect to be successful long term? And, and I'm gonna ask you, and this is the question that you have to ask yourself. Could I give the same excuse to my boss? Would you dare? Tell your boss, you didn't do what you needed to do because whatever excuse you're giving for why you have not watched the week three video yet. This is just a reality check. Because if I can't, if, if y'all don't change your mindset, you're going to keep going down the same path. So I'm just saying all of this to, to, to help you to change your mindset because you can't win like this. Who wants to speak on this? This is just a very responsible, transparent conversation we're having. Director Burke, I, I like hey, to Beverly. share. This is Beverly. How you doing? Good. I, you know, um, and, and I really appreciate you. And, and you're right. You gave us, you talked to us last week and everybody said we were going to reset, you know, and, you know, including myself. So I reset 
And this weekend, you know, we we went hard this weekend with the um, blitz and the book and for the blitz for the uh, academy. And yet we had people to show up. Well, we should have had more people showing up, utilizing that that blitz opportunity because all you had to do was get your guests on there. We had director Wynn, Jody Wynn, director um, Crystal Brown, director Katrina White, um, director um, Tashia Franklin showed up, shared their testimonies. It was nothing you needed to do but ask somebody to give you 30 minutes. That's all I did. I called, I mean, in, I called prior to the Blitz in between the times when we were not blitzed and we had 30 minutes, I was calling, I was constantly getting people. I said, just get on, just listen for 30 minutes. That's what I did. Rather mm -hmm. than making any kind of excuse, I had no excuse. And then after the blitz, I got my butt on that phone and I kept calling because it's important that I keep running for my family. There's mm -hmm. no excuse. I turned 60 this year. I did not celebrate. I didn't want anything for my birthday. I said, we'll catch it after I get what I, I get when I make, let me, let me get the one star and we might celebrate just a little bit, but after that head is back down. Cause I got to keep running right. because this is the opportunity for me and my family. They gonna come again. And I promise you, I promise you the way this economy is changing, there will not be a middle class. There will not be a middle class. I don't know how soon it's coming, but it's coming real soon. Either you're going to be poor or you're going to have money to support yourself and your family. That's it. So this is the vehicle that God has put in place for me to run and provide opportunity for my family and those who attach to me who will come along with me. But I'm like, I can't drag anybody. You got to be willing. So that's what I got to share. So thank you so much. And you're right. We can't, you can't keep telling them this is week three. <laughs> you know, this is week three and you're giving it, we're giving it all we got. So that's what I got. Thank you for letting me share. I love it. Thank you. And you're right. And I've been saying for years that the middle class was disappearing. And y'all have an opportunity to choose a side. You're either going to be on the poverty side or you're going to be on the rich side. There, there's no in between. So, uh, Miss Delta. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, to hear what you say, uh, Director Burke, it, it's just so phenomenal. But what I want to say to everyone that's when, with any listening ear, and I just posed the question: How bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. Because as you as you mentioned, let's not let our why become our why not to do this i think that you know for me I'll, I'll i'll come from from my lane that sometimes we have to i mean we're doing for the family we're pushing for the family like the uh, the, the the young lady just spoke as far as we're in a race we're in a race and and, and we're moving forward we got to sometimes pull that family and let them know okay this is why i'm doing x y and z in the long run, it's going to be for you. So right now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, you know, get my knees, you know, bruised up a little bit, my elbows, because I, I got to rake, scrape, and I got, I got to push forward. I got to do what I got to do. But in the back of your head, what are you willing to do? What are your sacrifices? Because sometimes your family need to be in that struggle with you to know why you're pushing forward. If yeah. you don't, somewhere it's going to slip through the cracks of your why becoming your why not. And I know for me, it's for my family, but I want to show them through what I do and pushing forward that tradi our traditional way we, we, we internal and, and, and live and do life is just not about that. There are other avenues and other means of trying to build something phenomenal for your family, but you have to think about it and ask yourself, you know, what are you willing to do? What are your sacrifices? What do you want to do? I mean, you, you excuses, life is gone. As you said, life is just life and you can't get, you can't get over it. You can't get around it. You can't run through it. You're just going to have to deal with it and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and move forward because we have, we have to realize we have something that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And for me, convention, it was signed, sealed and delivered. <laughs> I'm serious. It was signed, sealed and delivered, you know, and it's just like, how bad do you want it? You know, are you willing to make 
sacrifices. So that that's what I wanted to share. But you know, yeah. ask yourself that question. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Shamika. Um, kind of share my story in the beginning. I had a problem with being disciplined. And I told Director Tamika Smith about it. I was in tears before that call ended. You already know. But she just told me that it didn't hurt bad enough for me. It wasn't hurting bad enough for me. That's why I have a discipline problem. Mm -hmm. So now <clears throat> what I do is, so I share with y'all, if you don't know, my why is to get off of Section 8 and all government assistance because I don't want nobody to tell me where I can live, how much food stamps I'm worth, where I can't go, how much rent I need to pay, who is your boyfriend? I, mm -hmm. I don't need, I don't want that for me or for my children. So that's my why. And so I've actually been homeless before because of me being on Section 8. So I had to get back to that hustle and that grind that I had when I when I was homeless. I, I couldn't accept no. I couldn't. I couldn't accept the no, you got to stay in this hotel for 30 more days. I couldn't accept that. So I had to do what I had to do. And I, listen, I had to just get back to that. I, I had to think about that. Okay, what was you doing, Shamika? I was, I was like, I need to get this done. I need to find me a house today. And I'm not getting out this car until I do it. And on that 30th day, when I was in that hotel, it was like, come on, we got, we got your keys here. Mm -hmm. And so I just had to get back to that grind because I don't, I have a four years old son. I have two teenage daughters and they had to experience that with me. I don't want that no more. I, I can't have that no more. So that's my never again. So like you told us before, Tanisha, we have to go back to those never again. Think back in the time of your life where you couldn't accept no way. You had to give it all you got. You have to go back to that and just, Think about that as this business, because this business is definitely going to afford me to get off of Section 8 and all government assistance. I don't mind paying cash for my own food. OK, <laughs> when yeah. I get to that point, I don't mind it. So I had to I don't have a discipline problem anymore. I'll tell you that I do all that I can every single day that I can. Sometimes I do get discouraged. But, you know, when you get when you get a little down, you go up. So I went up <laughs> to my directors and they definitely helped me out. Tanisha's helped me out. So some of y'all just ain't hurting bad enough for you. So that was just yeah. want to tell y'all my story. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. But that's it. That's it. You, you're not hurting enough. So for those of you who did not watch the week three video yet, it's because you comfortable and you're not hurting enough. You comfortable. Comfort is the biggest killer of your dreams. It ain't the white man. It ain't your boss. It ain't your spouse. It's your comfort zone. And you're right. We did a whole, we had a whole coffee break. And the whole topic was, what is your never again? What have you gone through in your life that you are like, never again? I've had my car repossessed. I've had two houses go into foreclosure. I remember having my lights turned off where I had to go in the hallway of the apartment to use the electrical outlet to heat up food for dinner. I remember not having any meat in my house to cook. And so it was peanut butter and jelly for dinner. I remember having to go into the five gallon water jug to pull out the quarters to put gas in the car. I got a whole bunch of never agains. So for those of you who did not do the assignment, I want you to ask yourself, what is your never again? You got to go back to that place. Because that place is the place where you, there were no, you couldn't give an excuse. Like Shamika said, couldn't take no for an answer. It was either survive or die. And you chose to survive. So what is your never again? Go ahead and give me a never again in the chat. I want to hear from everybody. What is your never again? Because it seems like you forgot. You made it through it and you forgot about it. You forgot about that struggle. What is your never again?
Never again will I want to have to ask my mom to help feed my family. Never again will I want to have to ask my father-in-law for money to help us pay the rent. Never again will I have to steal electricity because I couldn't pay my light bill. All right, Shamika said, never again will she be homeless. Mary said, being homeless, sleeping in her car with her four kids. Y'all gotta go back to that place. You gotta go back to that. And Mary, I want you to remember that because you're one of the people who didn't watch the video. And if, and if watching the video would help you to be in a position to never have to sleep in the car with your kids, wouldn't that be worth it? The hour and 51 minutes? You see how you got to make the connection? So when you talk about what do I need to do to stay motivated, that's it. Remember you never again. That's what's going to keep you going when times get rough. When you're tired. Let's look at some more of these never agains. Leticia said, having only $2 in my pocket and five, and five people to feed. That's what I'm talking about. Never again. That's, I mean, I, I can only imagine. I've been in that situation, not with five people to feed, but not having any money or groceries. And you're like, okay, pasta. Right, rice. What can I get? You shopping at the Dollar Tree for dinner? No one should have to shop at the Dollar Tree for dinner. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Family Dollar. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You shouldn't have to shop there to feed your family. Erica, having to ask for financial help and being told no. That's the worst. That's the worst, especially, and I've been there, Erica, so I know, I, I know what you're talking about. Especially, you know what makes it hurt even more? It's because we adults and we shouldn't have those kind of problems. I've been working since I was 14. And the fact that as an adult with a husband and children, and I got to ask for financial help didn't sit well with me at all. Because that means I just made some poor choices with my money. Because I was an able working body, working a job and still had to ask for help. That didn't sit well with me. Christina said, never again will I borrow from my son. Exactly. As parents, we should not be borrowing money for our, from our kids. That should definitely be a never again. That should definitely be a never again. I remember dip, having to dip into my son's savings because we were just that bad off. Kept saying, I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it back. Never was in a position to put it back. I remember those days. Karen said, never again getting car repoed and losing a house due to property taxes. Yep, I lost two houses, so I know I can relate. Tabitha, Tabitha said, never again will I have to ask for financial help to pay for anything. Angela said, my current situation, having to depend on others for finances. I, I get it. I get it, Angela. I, I, I mean, I, I feel you on that. But again, Angela, you one of those people that didn't watch the video yet, right? So you gotta go back. You gotta go back, Angela, and remember 
your current situation that if you don't do what you need to do, you're gonna end up staying in that situation, right? So we got we got to do what we got to do. Mr. Burke, my never again is I will never again put myself in a position where I have to DJ at a strip club for 10 hours just to make only 20 to $50 to help feed my family. That was our situation. The money he made was barely enough to pay, to put gas in the car to make it back home. Not to mention DJing in a strip club is very degrading, especially as a father and a husband and a Christian. Let's go there. Let's go there. You want to talk about never again. It's a very desperate place. Rochelle, never again will I drive a broken down car that breaks down on the road and don't have the money to pay to fix it and have to get it towed. Never again will I have to use a credit card for food because I cannot afford food. So I put it on a charge card. Real, that's real talk. You shouldn't have to use a charge card to buy food. That's definitely a debit card purchase, right? Pandora, emptying myself to, to revive something or someone that's dead or dying, paying a $20,000 payroll and can't pay myself. That's real. Benita, I will, my never will I get on DSS. Arthetis, never again will I have to hear a child say I'm hungry and not be Ooh. able to do anything about it. Mm. I feel I feel that. I feel that. I remember when I had my son and moved to Florida, he was only two weeks old. And I was so happy that I was breastfeeding because it saved me money. And I, rem I remember going to that first doctor's appointment here in Florida and they told me my son was underweight and I needed to supplement with formula. And I ain't really have money like that to buy formula. Formula and diapers at the same time? I had to ask my family for assistance on that. So I feel that. Jean said, never again have debt. Mr. Burke, never again will I, will I allow an employer to walk me out of the door at a job after they decide my poor choices in life when I was younger would negatively impact their business. Yep. Never again, Ebony said, never again lose myself to other people, other people's gains. Mm -hmm. Beverly, never again, no money in the bank and living off of credit cards for day-to-day -day necessity things. Gail, to rely on someone else's income to stay above water. That's right. We want to fight to get out of the water. We don't want to just keep our heads above water. We want to get out of the water. Karen, never again will I sacrifice my tithes to pay bills. Lawanda, my never again will bank be empty on the same day I get paid. Ooh, been there too. Anybody ever be negative? On um, payday, I'm talking about after the money hit the bank, you in a negative. I'm glad I, I'm not the only one. Oh my gosh, that is the worst. And then you want to try to shut your account down so that the money you can get the, never mind. You know how y'all have to work the system when that happens, right? Oof. Crystal said, never again will I stay in a relationship that wasn't working because I wasn't sure if I could make it on my own. That's why we got so many domestic violence people. They stay because they don't have the money. Shamika? I was just gonna um, actually refer a book where I had an aha moment. It's um, Intentional Living by John C. Maxwell. We were actually reading that with the reading room uh, with director um, Gregory Scott where we woke up well, at five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was on that 
Zoom and we kind of broke down that book together. And it, it talks about going back to those times where it hurts. And, you know, sometimes you, you just got to take yourself back there. You might cry and then guess what? You're going to fly. So mm-hmm. that book definitely made like really, really changed some things in me. So I would suggest, you know, reading that Intentional Living by John C. Maxwell. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I know we were supposed to talk about week three today. We ain't make it, but we can talk about that on Thursday. And hopefully um, all the people who have not watched it, you get two days grace period to get it done. But I think this, I think just like always on virtual coffee break, we are always led to the topic that people really need to hear. It's not about what I want to talk about but we're just always led to where we need to be. And I think this is a very responsible topic and, and it's a reminder. And sometimes I have to go back to that place too. And remember where I came from. Cause this building this business is not easy. It's hard. The work is simple right? PS3 is simple, which we'll talk about more on Thursday. But the day-to-day pushing and grinding, it's hard. While life is happening, it's hard. But I will say this, it's also worth it. And remember, your money zone is outside of your comfort zone. It is very easy to fall back into what's comfortable, even if it's dysfunctional. I want y'all to catch that. It's very easy to fall back into what's comfortable, even when it's dysfunctional. And we are so wonderfully made, especially as women, especially as women, because we are so able to adjust to any situation, no matter how bad it is, that's just like our nature. That's just how how we're made as as, as homemakers, as as caregivers, right? As 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 the beings who give life, right? We we are just wonderfully made. Where no matter what the situation is, we just kind of adapt. Where other people may freak out, the men. Sorry, boo, but it's true. Women, we just we just adjust, right? Because we have to, because we're the parents. We have to. We, we, don't, we don't get the option to just check out, do we? We can't say, oh, I'm having a bad day, kids. I'm going in my room and locking the door. We, we can't do that. And so sometimes that works against us when we're CEOs in the business because we just adjust. And so we get comfortable with the dysfunction and we shouldn't. There has, there has to be, there has to be some borders there that you, you have to set some limits, some boundaries on what you're willing to accept from yourself and what you're not willing to accept from yourself and not completing an assignment that's going to put you in a position to set your family financially free should be one of those boundaries. Especially when it's something as simple as watching a video that's an hour and 51 minutes. What you do on your day job is much harder than that. So it's like, how is it we're able to make time for those things, but we can't make time for ourselves? And again, ask yourself, use this as a tool This is the tool that I want you to use to help push you when you want to just slap. Could I give my boss the same excuse? If the answer is yes, then go ahead and use it. More power to you. But if the answer is no, because you know that they would fire your arse, then don't don't give it over here either. Is that fair? Closing comments. Who wants to share their takeaway 
from today's session. Go ahead, Ms. Delta, and then Erica. Can you hear me now? Yes. I always have a problem with that. And I, and I can make it through this without crying, but it's just so profound uh, just to take it back to the convention for a second. I mean, to hear Eric Thomas talk about, he, he, I mean, he didn't necessarily talk about his why, he just talked about his experience, all the negative that he experienced in his life and how he rose above that. So my takeaway is that you show us each time that we, in, in a session, through, through our learning each week, we are, what we can take away from it. And what I take away from it every day is not to give no excuses, stay consistent in what we do and move your life forward. Life is gonna, and I guess that's gonna be my new phrase, life is still lifing. And like I said, you can't go ov over it, under it or around it. It's going to be what it's gonna be. But I think if we not just share what we do with our families, but show them what the end result is going to be, they will be a little bit more accepting, but we have to still stick to our grind. We have to hold fast, number one, hold fast to God's unchanging hand. Because as, as I heard one representative say that God has given us this, it's, 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 it's here for a purpose, it's here in our lives for a reason, and it's our time. It is our time. Donald Bradley shows us through what he has done and created that this is our time. And I'm glad I'm in the right position to move not only my life forward, but the, the life of my family as well. But you go back and ask yourself, how bad do I want it? Okay. How bad? Do and you ask yourself, and that's, that's for everybody, ask yourself, how bad do you want it? If it's your family, then do what it takes to, to, to be to do what you need to do for your family, but not allow it to be your why not. That's exactly. what thank, thank you, you so much. Miss Karen, I mean Erica and then Karen. Hello. Sorry, y'all. I'm in the gym. Um, but hopefully you can hear me. Yes. I just want to say thank you to sharing your your story, ladies, everyone here, because a lot of times we get so caught up thinking that we're the only ones that are going through life. We're the only ones that have experiences. And so that's one of the things that I love about this company is that the culture, the community, you know, we're here for each other. And so thank you for sharing your never again, because I want my, I'm, I'm making a list. <laughs> when I go home, I'm making a list of my never again, and I'm putting it up on that wall. There you go. I love that. I love that. Yep. Keep keep your why in front of you. Thank you, Erica, for sharing. And Miss Karen. My takeaway is that I just have to do more of what I'm doing. Uh, listen, reading all of these and listening to you, uh, you know, identifying with some of them and and knowing that these this is our why and these are our never agains. And I like what the young lady said about putting it up. And putting it in front of us, like we put our why, that's that's part of our why. You know, our goals, we put those up, put those up to remind us. Um, you know, my my thing is 11 per hour. That's my new, that's, you just did, might as well make that my nickname, 11 an hour, because that's what's going to happen. Because wow. never again will I get on here and say something that I think I'm proud of and then say, that's not enough. 11 an hour, that's my takeaway. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all again for participating. Um, you know, give yourselves a round of applause because y'all are the ones that make virtual coffee break so amazing. It's not me. It's you. It's you um, being transparent. Um, it's you engaging. That's what makes virtual coffee break so special. Um, so thank you for being transparent and sharing your stories because your stories just like Karen said, they're helping you. And I, I'm still looking at some of these 
um, never again. And I know Stormy, we have a, um, a coaching call coming up, but someone on here has said, I think it was you, Karen, that said some of these never agains are like breaking your heart. I, I feel that I'm, I'm looking at this never again. Will I buy groceries through PayPal making four payments? If that doesn't push you to work the business, right? And then someone else, Amira says she's she's had to do that as well. I mean, Benita, jumping from one food pantry to another. I feel that. I don't want that for any of you. No one should have to go through that. Not in the richest country in the world. Now, now, when we got Planet Marketing, the baddest opportunity on the planet, literally. So let's let's write these never agains down. Put it in your diary. Put it on your vision board. Put it put it somewhere where you can see it every day. I don't care if you got to put it on a post-it and put it on the bathroom mirror to remind yourself of why you're doing this. All right. So I will see you all on Thursday. Thursday is when we'll have the official uh, week three support. So all of you who have not watched the training video, go ahead and do that. And we'll talk about it on Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.